hi welcome to my latest video today I'm filming my second vlog video this is a video log and I'm gonna try and film one of these every month on the first Sunday of the month so I'm out here it's been raining for weeks and weeks and weeks but finally now the Sun is out pit lane kitty's out here somewhere there she is okay she's not gonna be helping me with this so she's gonna do some sunbathing I have my world's worst ever car boot sale out here again okay so I'm gonna talk about some of these bits and bobs I'm gonna talk briefly about recent videos and the feedback that I've received we'll have a quick uh, look at products events and upcoming videos and how my channel is doing first of all though the most important thing which I didn't really talk about in the last vlog video is how is my car running this is a channel about my car so I do need to uh, let you know now and again how it's going well it's going very well around Christmas time I removed the swirl flaps I did the fuel filter and I replaced the glow plugs just doing the swirl flaps alone has transformed how the car is driving it, it really does feel good it's smooth it's powerful the hesitance is gone it, it's like driving a new car even though this one's done 187,000 miles now it's it's given it a new lease of life I think the fuel filter has also helped the car just feels more powerful and more responsive so well worth doing that I've also fixed my winch so that let me down embarrassingly when I was down at Imber Village tried to use it and it didn't work I took the front end off about two weekends ago and after a bit of probing around with the voltmeter I realized that two of the four big high current cables had actually sort of suffered from like oxidation I think it was it was it was where I'd soldered them and I shouldn't have soldered them I should have just crimped them because if you just crimp there's a bit of flexibility and and resistance against sort of mechanical uh, shaking and vibration things like that um, I soldered and it made a brittle joint water had got in and it all just turned to a white powder and the cables two of the cables sort of broke off okay so new cables and the winch is working again luckily there's nothing actually wrong with the winch motor okay so there's nothing wrong with the winch itself it was just the wiring to the winch which is what I'd suspected because when I tried to operate it it just clicked and there was voltage being provided but it it was just clicking as if there was a high resistance joint and that's exactly what there was okay so that was a recent video I've also done videos on the, the headlight bulbs okay so I've looked at various different headlight bulbs Halford's 200% uh, the GT what are they called Philips GT 200 which are also 200% brightness the bulbs were they looked identical and the light coming out of them was identical so didn't really see any difference there I've, I've kept with the Halfords ones but I'll keep the GT 200s in reserve I will be changing my headlights okay so these ones I tried to use a sort of uh, kind of headlight renovation liquid uh, but it didn't work it was like um, something I bought on eBay a bottle of stuff and it was meant to get rid of uh, like like sort of cloudy headlights or headlights with sort of roughness on on uh, to polish out the, the it's not glass it's plastic but these cracks here are they actually go all the way through the plastic and they're caused by the heat of the bulbs behind okay so where I've run Osram night breakers Philips diamond vision in the past they are very powerful bulbs but they get very hot and I am going to make things worse with the the Halfords ones and the GT200s they also are very hot bulbs okay you'll notice here main beam absolutely clean as a whistle 
and that's because I've got LEDs in the main but you can't really put LEDs in the dip it'll fail the MOT however if you have the projector type bulbs you can't see the bulb element you can't actually see the bulb itself it's behind a sort of fisheye kind of lens thing in the headlight so there is a little bit of a slightly naughty sort of train of thought there that if the MOT tester can't see the bulb all he can go on is the dip beam uh, beam pattern he's not allowed to start taking things apart and go rummaging looking for the bulb to see what type it is and is it CE marked etc they could just measure the, the the light coming out but with these ones you can actually see the bulbs now I've been running LEDs in main for years and never had a problem main beam is, is a, a lot more relaxed okay you you just have to have uh, two main beams, white or yellow, pointing forwards, and they have to extinguish when you dip the headlights. That's, that's really what the requirements and the regulations say. Dip beam, there's a lot more to it, okay? So the beam pattern, the height and brightness and everything all comes into it. So if you put LEDs in, not only does it mess up the beam pattern, but they're, they're, they're very, very bright. Uh, not only will it probably fail the MOT, but you're just going to be one of those sort of antisocial people with really bright lights kind of coming up behind you. I don't want to be that person, but the thinking is if I can get projector lights and I can get some LEDs that are not stupidly bright but are sensible LEDs that give out a similar light output and a similar colour to, for example, my Philips Diamond Visions, then that will work because... The MOT tester will, will see the beam and it'll all hopefully be okay. The colour will be right, the brightness will be right, and I won't have the heat, which is ruining the glass here. Now, a little bit of warmth isn't a bad thing. That, that gets rid of the ice and snow and freezing fog and things off the headlights, okay? So you don't want a completely cold headlight, but it you know, is useful to have a little bit of warmth in there. Now, some of the LEDs have kind of like heat sinks and fans and things built on the back of them. So I need to find some that do generate a bit of warmth, but not so much heat that they ruin the glass. Okay, talking of warmth, I said back in one of my videos, I think it was the one where I was starting to think about doing the glow plugs, I said, if I do the glow plugs, I know what will happen. We'll have the warmest January on record. Well, that's exactly what happened. We had the warmest January on record. February was also quite warm, very wet. Um, it's just rained. It's just rained continuously for the last three weeks. And I've, I've, it's really ruined my plans to get out here and get on with my Webasto heater, which is what I wanted to do. I do intend to do the Webasto heater. I don't really need it at the moment. We, we've hardly had any frosty mornings. Uh, I think we've had like two, maybe since December. Uh, the glow plugs are in there, they're working, but I hardly ever see that glow plug light come on. It did back in January, I think there were two mornings, and this morning was frosty, but I didn't need to drive the car until it was above zero, so the glow plug light didn't come on. So I'm glad I've done it, but it's just typical, isn't it? Yeah, I do the, the glow plugs, uh, and, and then it's really, really warm weather. So never mind, never mind. Um, they'll be there ready for next winter. The Webasto is on the list, okay, I am going to be doing that. So here is the water pump, here is a pump bracket, and let me get my reading glasses out of the way. Um, this is a, a sort of pump clamp bracket that I've been designing, and that will allow the water pump to be sort of mounted kind of above the Webasto, which is in there somewhere. I was kind of hoping to have the front end removed for this video so I could actually show you, but I'll be doing that next weekend or the weekend after, depending on the weather. Okay, so Webasto on the list. Oil leaks, okay. Now, I had big problems with oil leaks a while back. Oil, there was engine oil, there was gearbox oil, there was possibly even transfer oil. I actually added uh, oil paint to my gearbox I think I put bright orange in the gearbox and blue in the uh, um, in the transfer housing and the the oil that was coming out was 
fairly orange really which is a bit worrying because that's gearbox um, and it all started when I had the clutch done so it, it's eased off a bit though so either there's no oil left in the gearbox or the leak has sort of sorted itself out uh, I, I yeah I, I mean there's every possibility that when the clutch was done the gearbox was maybe um, overfilled or something I don't even know if it's possible to overfill the gearbox I think you fill it to brim on the filler plug but anyway the the oil leak seems to have eased off you can see there's that's water there's a tiny stain there but it's not kind of like wet and fresh and it's also not black like black engine oil because I was leaking a lot of black engine oil and uh, yeah I made a mess of a, a few people's driveways um, but since putting kind of this with the new catch can and all of that and this with Jubilees rather than Michelors all nice and tight and airtight now and there's there's just no oil going down the back now which is brilliant the catch can is here this is in I've I bought a few of these and I sold them and I am also making the brackets okay so I'll just show you what I'm talking about there so we've got a better clamp around the this is a Masso catch can but it's very very similar to the Man Hummel Provent 200 okay and then there is a L-shaped bracket there uh, which this band bolts to and that sort of bolts it to this uh, bolt here okay so that is working well somebody did leave a comment on one of my videos or Instagram or something and they said could the drain from the catch can be rooted back to the sump so anything that's caught just goes back to the sump yes you could you could do that however the oil that this thing collects is quite gloopy i mean there, there is signs of a bit of moisture there but i don't think it's head gasket moisture or anything like that it's just because of condensation that forms during the, the night it gets cold and then uh moisture and that forms in there and yeah it just kind of gets a bit scummy and sludgy so i think that sort of oil you're best to just get rid of that and throw it away not put it back into the engine uh, we don't want all that grot going back into the sump so oil leaks just stop oil leaks tick i think oil leaks are pretty much sorted finally right what else so we talked about the catch can headlight bulbs talked about those what else okay so i enabled mid-roll ads on my channel in February just to see how much it would boost revenue and the results were quite surprising it, it really did boost the revenue by 57% okay, so the the pounds that I get the amount of money I get for every thousand views went up from two pounds 38 pence up to three pounds 73 that's a big jump okay that is a big jump and that's really helped okay because I'm doing all this at a loss I've yet to actually make any profit doing my parts and my channel and all the, uh, the all the expenses associated with all of this uh, it, it's an expensive business okay so I do need to leave those mid-roll ads on I know they're annoying and I apologize for that you can sort of skip some of them others you can't skip but uh, yeah they, they are going to have to stay uh, and they will be automatically applied by youtube on any videos over eight minutes long if you get youtube premium then then there's no adverts at all okay i think it's like 14 pounds a month or something like that uh, i've got a vodafone mobile phone and i actually get it sort of bundled in with my mobile phone contract so it's worth checking if your broadband provider or your mobile phone provider do a sort of entertainment package or whatever they call it um, and, and sometimes you can get YouTube premium sort of added in as an extra okay so that's what I've done uh, and it's really good so I can just watch videos with no adverts and I can also download them so you can actually download them to your phone which you can't normally do with YouTube so I can then go off sort of for a, a cycle ride or something like that and I can actually uh, put my phone on the handlebars and watch Scott and Alana or Frenchie's road trip or Colin Furs or all the other channels that I subscribe to. Okay, so events this year, I'm gonna be at Bewley, I'll be at Gaydon, I'm gonna be at the Basingstoke Festival of Transport, I'm gonna be at Carfest, which is also in the Basingstoke area, it's sort of Newbury kind of area, somewhere around there, L L Lavis, Lavistoke, 
uh, farm or park, I think it is. I've never been before, but I'm going to be there with the 4x4 responders volunteering to uh, tow cars out of the muddy car park and things like that. I'm not sure about Belvoir Castle. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I pronounce it Belvoir. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it's a long old drive, that one. It's like a four-hour drive to get up there. So uh, maybe, maybe not. See, see how things go. Products, okay, so catch cam brackets, I've talked about those, I've been making those, um, I've been making more of those, I don't know if I'll be actually buying any more catch cans for a while, so if you want the same catch can set up, your best bet is buy the catch can on Amazon, okay, so it's a Masso catch can, I'll try and put a link to that in the description of this video, it's about £50, something like that, 40 to £50, and the the bracket you can buy just the brackets you go on my website find the catch can but in the options it says you know do you want the can or the can and the brackets or just the brackets or just the band or and you, you you basically pick the bits you want okay so as those parts are printed and they come back in stock i will put those on the website talking of things going back in stock roof 42 inch light bar brackets okay i've made another batch they are selling out fast, all right? So if you want a light bar, let me come around here so you can actually see that without the sun sort of blinding. Okay, there you go, 42 inch light bar. This one is, I think, a WOW LED light bar or something like that. I may be changing that at some point for another brand. I think Osram do them, uh, Rigid. There's, there's a German company called Strands. Uh, they, they are really good and really, really bright. Very expensive though. We're talking like 600 euros or something for something like that. Uh, I might have to save up for that. Um, but I have seen the light output on another Land Rover with one of those fitted. And it was, yeah, it was like somebody just made it daylight again. So, uh, yeah, um, that's the brackets. Here you go. So they, they just fit kind of underneath these covers come off a couple of bolts and uh, then you, you you fit them to your to the ends of your light bar um, needs to be light bars with the holes on the ends not the kind of clampy things underneath okay so those are back in stock I've got about four pair four or five pairs left okay so if you want those don't delay they are selling out quickly Spotlight brackets, haven't actually got them on my car here because I need to be able to get in and get to the free spool for the winch. Um, but spotlight brackets that I make for pre-facelift and facelift grill. Also do them for the Discovery 4, facelift and pre-facelift. Uh, they are selling well. The Freelander 2 ones were using M4 bolts and I've actually upped those to M5. And I'm also, here you go, there's the M5. Okay, so this is actually an amber strobe mount. So I've done the spotlight brackets, they are now on M5 bolts, and I'm now updating the amber strobes to M5. The amber strobes, they're so lightweight, they don't need M5 bolts, but I'd rather everything use the same bolts, because otherwise I've got to have rear parts with M4 inserts, rear parts with M5, uh, different size bolts, different lengths of bolt, it, it all gets a bit silly really, so just get them all on the 35mm M5 five bolts and and then it just makes it a lot lot simpler and i don't go and send the wrong rear parts or the wrong bolts to somebody who's bought them so webasto talked about that we've got the pump mount there when i wire in the webasto i'm going to be running some high current cable to an, a, another battery okay so the webasto can't run off the main battery because it will flatten it uh, it's a bit pointless warming your car up if you then hop in it and can't start it because the battery's flat. So I need another battery. I was going to mount a, like a motorcycle battery or something kind of up behind underneath there. But that's really where the control box needs to go. Because I want to keep it up in the dry. So I thought what I'll do is I'll put my leisure battery in the boot. Because I've got a big solar panel that I put on the roof when I go camping. Put that in the boot somewhere like under the boot floor or something, I don't know where exactly. And then I can run this cable kind of through through the car to the battery. 
I, I don't quite know how I'm going to run it like through or under or over, I don't know yet. Um, but that will connect up to the other battery via the sort of intelligent charging relay thing that I bought. Okay, so it's a thing that sort of intelligently kind of like charges the secondary battery. People use them with caravans and that. If they've got a caravan with its own battery, you, you don't want to use that when you're starting your car. But once the engine's running, it will charge the second battery. Okay, so it's a kind of like effectively a, like a like a big diode really it's like a one-way thing it doesn't use it to start but it it will send the current in the other direction so what else the EGR valve the here is one okay so this is a later EGR exhaust gas recirculation valve and it's got the motorized valve which actually sends the exhaust gas down this pipe here into the throttle body but it also has a sort of like pneumatic like actuator thing here with a another valve at the other end why does it need two um, nobody really knows but I'm guessing it's because of the DPF diesel particulate filter which is on the later model so the the earlier ones didn't have this they just had that okay so they they had a, a valve that controlled the recirculation but this one is controlling sort of the gas entering at the other end. It, it's a bit strange, really. So if you, if you know about this, please leave a comment and explain it. It's a bit strange, but this section here is like a water cooling system. So there's like a, an in and an out for the water. So it uses the coolant um, of, of the engine, the engine cooling system, to cool that exhaust gas and when this one opens and that one opens it ends up going back around into the engine it's done for emissions okay so so it lowers the combustion temperature and it uh, reduces nitrogen oxides and other nasty gases and things that come out of the exhaust okay so this car doesn't have dpf but it does have an egr and it's down there now if you remove your egr and the mot tester spots that it is a fail i'm possibly going to try and just remove mine anyway and just see how I get on okay so it's kind of down hidden behind that black rocker cover so when I do that rocker cover and change that for a nice new clean one I'm going to have a look down the back and see how easy it is to get at the EGR it's quite a it's quite a big thing it's certainly quite a quite a heavy thing now mine's blanked off I've got a blanking plate here so even though my EGR is still operating, it, it's, it's not doing anything. So I could probably just remove it from the car, blank off this. Now that attaches onto here. This is an exhaust manifold, okay. So that, that is what the exhaust manifold looks like. Then this here is the exact bolt size of a BMW X5 blanking plate, okay, so I showed that in vlog one. So vlog one, stainless steel BMW blanking plate fits perfectly there. Okay, so the idea is get rid of this, fit a blanking plate to the exhaust, and, and then all of this and all of that pipe and everything can just go. Okay, that's, that's the idea. What worries me though is if I do go for an MOT and it fails because of that, I'm going to have to put it all back on again, uh, which is going to be quite annoying. So it's a bit of a risky project to do, but it would, I believe, make a really, really interesting video. Talking of interesting videos, okay, I bought one of these things. It is a Sealy battery monitor and vehicle finder. You connect it up to the battery and it monitors your battery and it says wireless connection so there's an app like an iPhone app and it will um, I don't know tell you if your battery's gone flat or something like that I, I haven't even plugged it in yet so I'll get the app I'll do that as a separate video okay get the app plug it in um, I'm kind of hoping I'll see fancy graphs of my battery charge through the night and things like that uh, yeah be, be an interesting thing to look at other videos coming up Okay, so I want to uh, fit a bigger intercooler. Okay, so the RS Turbo Focus Mark III intercooler. And you're fitting one of those, if it will fit. 
uh, the snorkel project needs resurrecting at some point and I want to do a video on sort of suspension bushes so replace like the, the anti-roll bar drop links and uh, various bushes and possibly the, the lower arms and all that kind of thing. I mean this car's getting on a bit now, it's done quite a lot of miles, things are just getting a little bit bit sort of loose and perished in the bush department okay so uh, um, some nice new polyurethane bushes would, would really help. I might buy some, I might even try and make some myself but uh, yeah we'll see. Is there anything here I haven't talked about? Oh one last thing, this. I bought two of these little LED lights okay. Now you're gonna see the state of my boot now it's absolutely full with stuff and parts but I'm going to be Right, come on, expose, there we go. I'm gonna be mounting them there and there, actually, because they're kind of barbed, these will actually clip into the plastic. And then when you open the boot, these are designed to go in like uh, inside transit vans and things, up in the ceiling of a transit. Um, but perfect for illuminating underneath the boot lid of a Freelander 2. Right, hopefully I haven't talked for too long. That's it for today, end of vlog two. Vlog three will be filmed the first Sunday in April. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.